Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome back to our modern OpenGL lesson. In this lesson, we're going to do a little bit of coding and actually get a triangle to show up. So it's going to pick up from the code that I wrote in lesson five. So make sure that you go back there if you'd like to take a look. Otherwise, let's go ahead and dive in. So I'll go ahead and do a quick code review of our actual project here. Here's the structure here and recall that we use glad. You could use blue if you want to wrangle or bring in our OpenGL functions. We have our main here and then the glad C, which has some implementation details. We're primarily going to be working just in the main here. So again, I'm using the SDL2 framework to get us set up here. Uh, you need to bring in glad and maybe we'll want to do some input and output for debugging. So let's go ahead and just compile this program to see that it works. Now, in order to compile it, we've got to sort of remember some things here. G++, I need my main.cpp file. Let me go ahead and leave the structure here. I need to compile in that source directory the glad file and then I need any includes so capital I for the includes and the include directory and then I need to link in my SDL2 and on Linux the DL library here. So this looks like it is uh, almost working here. Oh, just forgot one L here and let's actually give our program an output name here. I'll just do prog and let's just go ahead and review what we see here. Well, we see the strings from our OpenGL get string, and we have a SDL2 window capable of rendering here. Now our goal today is just going to be to render a simple triangle. Okay, so what pieces are we gonna need? Now that we have a way to uh, compile, I'll leave that compilation command here, open up our source code, and let's dive in. So where I wanna start here, or where I wanna start thinking about things is We've actually set up or initialized our program that was the SDL and OpenGL part, and we have our main loop. But before we get to our main loop, where we're actually gonna be doing the work of drawing our triangle, what we really wanna do is the vertex specification. So allow me for a moment to go ahead and write that function, which I'm just going to specify here as the vertex specification. And this function essentially is going to be responsible for getting some vertex data on our GPU. And then I'm going to actually have another step here called create graphics pipeline, which is going to be responsible for once we have our actual geometry, creating a pipeline with a vertex and a fragment shader. So that'll mean compiling some source code, shipping it to the GPU, and then we will eventually get into our main loop and actually draw some stuff. So let's go ahead and start with our vertex specification. So somewhere above this function here, and let's go somewhere reasonable here, perhaps uh, before we initialize a program, just because I like to have things sort of in order, I'll create our vertex specification here. Now, again, the goal of this is just to create some vertices. So I can do this on the CPU side, and I'm just going to use a vector to do this. Now I could use a float, here because these are going to store X, Y, and Z positions, but we'll try to prefer OpenGL floats just because across different architectures, they'll be more uniform. In reality, this probably isn't going to make a difference on desktop or even console development, but this is just good practice. So here I have my vertex positions. Now let's actually specify them. I'll use a initializer list to do that. And I'm just going to uh, get some vertex positions. Now these ones I happen to have on a document in front of me. Um, but basically what this is, is the X, Y, and Z positions here. So let me label those X, Y, and Z positions of our first vertex. Now let's go ahead and create another. So I'll put a comma here and another reasonable uh, location here. Now I'm doing these between a value of zero and um, one in general, or negative one in one, excuse me, because that's what our actual OpenGL coordinate system is. Um, it's not some range of, say, uh, 0 to 800 or anything like that. Okay, so we'll have to talk a little bit more about um, coordinates later. But uh, for now, these are our three vertices here. And let's just go ahead and say vertex 1, vertex 2, and vertex number 3. Okay, and this is on the actual CPU. So lives on the CPU. Okay. Now, how do we get this on our actual GPU? Well, there's a few things that we need to do. We need to set up a vertex array object first, and then a vertex buffer object, which will actually contain this data. Okay, so in order to create the vertex array object, GL gen vertex arrays, how many do we want? Well, just one for now. 
and then I need somewhere to place it. And the common way that OpenGL works with this is by using an integer that's sort of a handle into some object here. I'm just going to call this G uh, vertex array object. Okay, now we need to declare this somewhere. Um, and this is going to be a OpenGL unsigned int. So GLU uh, for GL unsigned. And then it's just simply int here. So G vertex uh, array object. Now you'll notice I actually um, didn't uh, give this any default value. Let's just give it zero. Um, and I'm actually going to make this a global variable. And again, sorry for making this a global. <laughs> That's just uh, how it is to get started. We can think about what data structure or manager classes we want uh, later on. So this is our vertex array object. And actually, while I'm at it, let's go ahead and, uh, well, let's just focus on our vertex array object for now and finish uh, generating this. So after I've generated it, what's the next step here? Well, again, it's one thing to uh, watch me do this, but let me again give you a little bit of an assist here. So GL gen vertex arrays. I'm using docs GL here, which often has some uh, useful examples here. Um, so again, just to understand those parameters, how many things that we want, and then the actual uh, arrays where they're gonna be specified. Um, in this case, I just have one integer here. Um, so that's okay. If I had two or three, I would actually make this uh, an integer here. But in general, the next step is once we have one of these objects is to bind to it. A GL bind vertex array. Okay. And which array do we want to bind to? Well, this one that we just generated. And again, bind is like select. It's saying, hey, use this one that we just created here. So let's go ahead again into our search. GL bind vertex uh, array version four, although it's usually not different in version three, but we want to be specific. And we can see that we're just binding to or selecting a specific array here. Okay. All right. So now that we've done that, uh, and that's going to be important for our uh, layout for what information we're accessing. So we'll get to that in a moment. But now I'm going to start generating our vertex buffer object. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, again, gl gen buffers, another generate command. One uh, buffer is what we want to generate, and gl vertex buffer object. And we're using an ampersand because, again, this is a C based API, so we're passing in addresses of these things. Um, and I need to, again, create a global variable for this vertex buffer object. Again, I know folks don't love this, but um, for our VBO, this is what we'll have gl. Uh, u int g vertex buffer object uh, equals zero. And these types, just so I don't uh, mess this up here, um, need to be uh, uppercase. So these should be G capital L. Oops. Let me hop back here. Capital G L u int and G L. There we are. Okay, now let's go ahead and hop back to our vertex specification. So we've generated a buffer, and now, um, as we typically do, we want to uh, select that buffer. Okay, so GL bind buffer. Okay, now let's go ahead and look at this on uh, GL docs here, GL bind buffer. And here we'll do open GL version four and go. And let's go ahead and take a look at the parameters here. It says here we bind uh, to some object and we've got a target. Okay, so there's many different targets that we can have depending on what information this buffer is gonna store. If we're accessing vertex attributes, we just need a GL array buffer. So these are the things that make up vertices, uh, positions, texture coordinates, colors, um, all the things that we've put into this buffer here. So let's go ahead and do GL array buffer. I don't need to specify, in, in a sense, um, anything beyond that, because the next parameter is, well, which buffer am I working with? That's the vertex uh, buffer object, vertex buffer object there. So now we've selected it. And now we're going to populate it with some data here. So GL buffer data. OK, let's go ahead and look at that in the docs. GL buffer data. And here it is. And again, you'll get quicker at um, 
these various commands, but it is helpful to sort of look them up one at a time and try to understand uh, what they are doing here. Uh, so let me go ahead and just leave up this documentation uh, and I'll leave up this uh, window here so we can see. So again, we have a uh, target. So what kind of uh, information are we working with? What is our actual buffer? Well, that's going to match the thing that we have bound to, the GL array buffer. And then we have the size here. Well, that's the size of our data in bytes. Okay, so how big is this buffer here? Well, if I actually look at the information that we're trying to store in this buffer, which is from this vector here, vertex positions, I can count here that there's nine floats, okay? Uh, now I'm going to do one better and use the actual data structure here, vertex uh, position dot size. So that'll be nine. And then we need the size in uh, bytes here. So if you actually go down to the size, it's a specified size in bytes. So you have to be careful. Now, how big is each one of these floats here? Well, just make it easy on yourself size of uh, GL float here, okay? And then on to the next parameter. So try to make things easy on yourself <laughs> as best you can here. Okay, now what is um, the next uh, parameter that uh, follows there? Go ahead and put on a new line here. That is the actual data here or the pointer to it. So the pointer to this data. Now, if you're using a data structure like a vector, we can actually get the uh, data here, which returns the pointer to the raw array. If you just had a regular array, you could just pass in the array uh, in that way. And then the final parameter is how's, how are we going to use this data? Well, we're actually just going to draw the triangle. And there's many ways that you can sort of hint to the OpenGL driver what is going to happen. Are these triangles going to change a lot? Are they going to be streamed in? Uh, we're just going to use for now uh, GL static draw because we're just trying to draw a triangle. Okay, so we've got that much so far and are now able to uh, load some data into a vertex buffer object. And now this is where the vertex array object comes back into play because we've said, hey, we've got this layout that we want to work with and we're going to start kind of working with it. Uh, and we've generated some vertex buffer object, but how do we actually get to that data here? And that's where we're going to enable an attribute. So GL enable uh, vertex a uh, trib array okay and the zero attribute okay so let's go ahead and paste that in and see what that brings up in the documentation the gl4 and i'll hit the uh, search and you'll see that this has to do with enabling or disabling some generic vertex attribute now again we've only got one attribute associated with these vertices and that's their position x y and z Okay, so we've just enabled it. Now, how do we use it? Well, then we're going to need something called GL vertex attrib uh, pointer. Okay, before I get to that, let me see. There are some examples here, so you can kind of take a peek, but I'm going to walk you through anyway. Uh, and let's go ahead to it. And you're going to see that there's quite a few parameters, but it might be easy if I just for now walk you through them. So let's go ahead and do GL vertex attrib uh, pointer. And the first, well, attribute that we're working with, that's right here, the index. Make this a little bit uh, bigger for you. Uh, right here, that's the index. Well, this is zero, so that matches exactly what we have here. Okay, what's the actual size of this? How many things are part of this collection? Well, if I have a uh, x, y, and z position, that's three things, x, y, and z. Okay, so that'll be three. And then the next number, the type. What type of information are we working with? Floating point information. So there's a, uh, a noom for that. As it normalized, I'll assume it's not, um, although in this case it really is. Um, I guess we could do either. Uh, the stride is how much, uh, well, let's actually see how the stride is uh, described here. But it's the byte offset between uh, consecutive attributes. Meaning, is there X, Y, Z, and then a space before we get to, say, color data, RGB? Well, we don't have any other attributes here, so for now this is just going to be zero as well. And then likewise, the next uh, parameter here, the pointer for the offset, uh, well, there is no offset here. So the initial value is zero, but you could just specify some uh, pointer as such here. Okay, and then we'll just go ahead and close that. Okay, now, now that we've done that, we've essentially said, okay, our vertex uh, array object here knows how to work with vertex buffer objects that have 
uh, basically X, Y, and Z position or one attribute. Okay. So now I'm just going to do some cleanup to close these things. Uh, so the way that we close things when we're done, uh, vertex will bind to vertex array. Well, previously we had vertex uh, array object, this one, uh, but we're done with it. We don't want to bind to anything. So typically we just bind to zero. Okay. Uh, and then we also disable typically anything that we do enable. So disable um, our vertex attrib array. Okay. Uh, and it was the zero one here. Okay. Now at this point, we've set up our uh, vertex specification here. I'll go ahead and make this a little bit smaller, just so you can see uh, what this looks like. Again, on the CPU, we start setting things up, and then we start setting things up on the GPU. Okay, simple as that. Now let's go ahead and take a moment here and see how good I've done as far as making any compilation errors. And there's a few here. We need to include vector at line four. So let's go ahead and do that. And let's see, it looks like we're missing something before line 51, which is, and let's just go ahead and look at this quickly here. Up oh, looks like I messed up something around line 35. So you folks probably saw that uh, before I did. And I stuck in a semicolon here, which is going to cause lots of chaos. Okay. So now we're just missing our create graphics uh, pipeline function. Okay. So I'm pretty confident that this is going to work because I've uh, coded it before, but let's go ahead and start looking at creating that graphics uh, pipeline here. And then we'll debug further as needed. So for our create graphics pipeline function, let's come up uh, somewhere towards the top of our uh, code here, where we might want to do this. Let's just go ahead and create the function, create graphics uh, pipeline. And if I save this and recompile, it should be uh, working now because we have our function here. Now, what I'm actually going to do in this function here is I need somewhere to hold the actual graphics pipeline. And again, you're going to notice some theme in OpenGL that these are usually just unsigned integers. Those are sort of the identifiers for some object because again, this is a C-based API. So this is going to be my program object for our shaders. And that's going to be another way to say this, our graphics pipeline, something that has a handle to a pipeline that we compile that has the vertex shader and the fragment shader. Okay, so let's just go ahead and give this, uh, this is going to be another GLU int here. And uh, for a name, I will just call this G graphics pipeline shader program. Again, you'll come up with better names yourself, but I just want to be very, very specific here. All right, so this is going to be where we store our object. Now, how do we exactly create this shader? Well, what I'm going to do is kind of work backwards a little bit to uh, create some abstraction here. I'm just going to write a function here called create shader program, and it's going to take in some sort of vertex shader and a fragment shader. Okay, so we'll have to get to those parts here. But let's go ahead and start creating this create shader program. And again, the idea is that this is going to be a function that takes in some string here, perhaps by a reference here, and the vertex shader and the string for the fragment shader. Okay. Now, I don't like these short names, so I'm actually going to name this fragment shader and the source code. Okay. Because these are actually going to be the uh, strings that we have in vertex shader source. Okay. So let's just go ahead and leave it as such here. Okay. And this is actually going to return some GLU into us. And again, that's going to be uh, the handle to the actual GPU shader program. Again, it's just an integer that I'll specify it. Okay, so what do we do in this create uh, shader program uh, thing here? Well, we have to create, uh, and it's going to be an unsigned int or GLU int here, some program object. Again, this is going to be our pipeline. So I'm going to call this GL create program. And that's another OpenGL function, just to be clear, so you know if I'm making up these things or not. GL create a program. Let's look at version four here. And this creates a program object. And essentially, as uh, if you want to read this, an empty program, and then we're going to fill in the vertex and the fragment shader part of it. Another name for this is just be create graphics pipeline. GL create graphics pipeline maybe is a better name for this. Okay. 
So I can go ahead and abstract this um, as much as I want, but um, I'm going to go ahead and do this um, for our uh, my vertex shader. And then again for my uh, fragment shader, I'm going to create another function. And I'm just going to call it, um, and this is common what you'll see in uh, libraries, something like compile uh, shader. Okay, and we're going to pass in the type of shader that we want to build and then the actual uh, vertex uh, shader source code. Okay, so compile uh, the shader, gl uh, fragment uh, shader, and these are just enums that I'm going to pass into this function and essentially compile these things. Okay, so let me go ahead and give myself um, another function here, glu int, and it's just gonna be called compile shader. And as far as the arguments go, it's going to take in a uh, type and then the actual uh, source code for the shader that we want to compile. Okay, And we'll work on this abstraction in a moment. But I want to go ahead and finish what the rest of our shader program here is going to do. Again, its job is to take whatever the result of compiling a vertex shader, again, this is happening while our program runs, and our fragment shader, and then assembling them in some way. So. Okay, what happens during that assembly process? Well, in order to uh, get everything into this uh, program object, we have to attach those shaders. Okay, I'm going to do gl attach uh, shader to our program object, and this is going to be my vertex shader. And I'll attach another shader to our program object, and this is going to be our fragment shader. Okay, so now they're attached. And you can kind of think of this like when you compile source code, when you compile multiple files together. And then we're going to link those um, together, okay? So let's link in our program object here. And now we might also do some things like validate our program to make sure that it's valid. Uh, sort of an error checking uh, stage here, program object, and so on. And this ultimately is what we return uh, from this function. Now there's some other things that I can do, for instance, um, that I'm going to admit for the length of this, but I also do want to detach these shaders and do a GL uh, delete shader for my vertex and my fragment shader. I'm going to do that in the next lesson when I show you a complete and commented uh, piece of code here. Okay, but now let's go ahead and uh, compile our shaders here. Okay, so what we're going to do here in our compile shader command and this is where the actual compilation happens. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and say, um, if it's one of these uh, enums here, um, else if gl, oh, I said fragment shader, we're going to do one of two different things. What's the shader that we're going to create here? So we want to create some shader object again, glu int shader. Uh, object, let's call it. And that's what we're actually returning here. Return the shader object. Okay, so uh, our shader object, if we're trying to pass in a vertex shader here, is going to be to, well, create uh, a shader. So it'll be gl create shader and a vertex uh, shader here. This isn't strictly necessary. In fact, you could probably get rid of this step here, but um, I do like to have some additional debugging later. So if I know if the type was the fragment shader or geometry shader, I can actually kind of output this. Uh, but for now, this is um, uh, fine here. Okay, in case somebody passes in a, a legal value or something. So I'll create a shader, and this will be the GL fragment shader here. Okay, now what do we do at this stage here? Well, when we have the source code here, now this is what we need to actually compile. And we'll get ready to compile it based off of it. It's a vertex shader or a fragment shader in this case. Okay, so I'm going to use the um, command here, gl shader source. So for our shader object, um, and let's actually take a look at this command here, gl shader source, and let's see what's going on. And I'll hit go. So it takes in the shader the uh, number of elements here that we are compiling, which is just one uh, shader, and then the uh, length of that actual string. 
which we only really have one, so I could pass in uh, null here if I want. Okay, so it'll be one uh, and our uh, source that we want to pass in. Now, this source needs to be passed in as a uh, constant char array because we don't have string types here. So just to be clear about what that is, const char, uh, this would be the equivalent of getting the um, C string version of our uh, C++ string here. So I can actually just pass that in here um, and then null pointer for the last thing. Okay. And then once I have that uh, shader here, I can compile the actual shader object itself now that we have the source code there. Now at this point, this is enough uh, to actually compile our shader. In fact, this can really be a uh, simple three line function here. Create the shader, set up the source code, and then compile it and then return that shader object. Now I've added a few additional things here just for error checking later on. And in fact, if our shader doesn't compile, we would actually want to uh, be able to log that. And I'll show how to do that in the next lesson, at least the uh, code to do so. Okay, so at this point, let's go ahead and save. Let's take a pause, see if I've made any mistakes. A few mistakes here. Line uh, 58 here uh, and 59 here. Let's see if there were any other ones. Hmm, okay, no other errors because we're missing our vertex shader source code and our fragment shader source code. So where does that uh, actually come from? And depending on your implementation and how fancy you want to get, um, and what we will eventually do is we want to load these from files. Now, because shaders themselves are just text information that we're going to compile, again, let's take a look at uh, where we're doing this compilation here with our shader source and then compiling it. These are really just strings. So for now, I'm just going to create two strings. They're going to be globals, which I know we don't uh, care for, but uh, we're just uh, learning right now. So let's go ahead and uh, paste in two strings for uh, some shaders here. Oops, let me undo this. Do a set paste. And here's two shaders. Okay. Now, these I admittedly have um, already written, so I'm going to just leave them up on the screen for a moment. And I described these in the previous video. But the form of shaders, usually you start with the uh, version of the shader that you're using. Any data that you're bringing in, which for our vertex shader, we're starting to bring information in, and then our main function, which is the entry point. And again, the goal of, or what the vertex shader must do, is position the final vertex. So you'll have this geo underscore position, which is a built-in variable where you position the vertex. Now this position x, y, and z, for instance, is the information from our vertex uh, specification, uh, which is by default what we're bringing in. Again, that's these uh, vertices here that we shipped into a uh, buffer, okay? Now for our fragment shader, to look at this for a moment, again, we start off with a version, and it's one job for a fragment shader is to have one out, because it's the final step as far as the uh, shaders are concerned that outputs the final color of a fragment or a, a pixel, if you want to think about it that way. Uh, so we have our entry point, and for this shader, we're just going to output a specific color here. Okay, so let's go ahead and pass in our vertex shader source and our fragment shader source into our uh, function here. And this is uh, down a few lines right here, line 81. And this is G vertex uh, shader source and G fragment shader source. Okay, so let's go ahead and give this a compile. It looks like it compiles, so at least on the CPU side, we know things are running. And if I go ahead and run this program, let's see what happens. Well, nothing at this point. Why not? Well, again, it's not uh, quite enough for us to just specify the data and the pipeline. We actually need to issue some sort of draw call. So again, just to refresh on our uh, actual program here, um, we have, after we've successfully created the uh, graphics pipeline, we need to look into our main loop here. And in our main loop, we handle input, which we have an input function that will just loop and listen for user key presses, a pre-draw function, and a draw function. Hmm. So those are the two that I've actually got to 
uh, implement here. So pre-draw is actually going to be responsible for setting OpenGL state. At least that's the way I'm going to structure it. You could put all of this in draw if you want. But this is going to be functions like what we want to disable or enable. So I'm going to disable a few things here just to make our scene uh, very simple. DL, disable. And a lot of these things you're welcome to uh, look up, but we will talk about as uh, necessary. And let's set up our GL viewport, which is essentially just the size of the uh, screen here, the screen width and the screen uh, height, and then the background color of our scene here. Let's try something uh, like this. Uh, one in the red, uh, one in the blue, and zero in the green, and fully opaque. Now, if I actually um, do this much. Let's see if our program runs here. Oops, one extra uh, period here. Let's see if it does anything different. Okay, so it compiles and still a black screen. So we're almost there. We're actually missing uh, one step here. And what we really need to do is say use program. And which program are we using? Well, our GL graphics uh, shader uh, program here. That's our uh, pipeline. So let's go ahead and try this now. And if we run it, uh, well, let's see. Well, we're almost there, but at least now we have our graphics pipeline. We have state set up and we're using uh, the appropriate pipeline here. Okay, so let's actually get into drawing. And when we actually issue our draw call, then the pipeline will be uh, activated. All right, so in order to draw, We've got to figure out which vertex array object are we going to be using. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, set that up uh, and draw GL. And how do we do this? Well, we bind to the vertex array that we want, vertex array object. Now, which um, buffer do we want to draw from? Well, let's go ahead and do GL uh, bind buffer and select the array buffer for our uh, one vertex uh, buffer object. And then now we'll issue our GL draw arrays, which is our draw call. We're drawing triangles. How many? Well, we're going to start from zero and we have uh, three here. Okay, let's go ahead and try to compile this, see if I made any syntax errors, and now try to draw. And now if I actually draw here, we are in fact getting a triangle here. So that's awesome, our first triangle. Now, one mistake that I've made, and maybe uh, some folks have seen this, is um, our background color is still black here. So I've got to actually call one other function here, um, which is going to be um, in our pre-draw function, uh, there is a GL clear command, and we're going to clear the depth buffer, which we've got to talk about. And the more important one is the uh, color background bit here. Okay, um, so let me go ahead and just rerun this. And now we should see some sort of yellowish color here for our triangle. All right, so again, because we didn't explicitly say, hey, OpenGL clear this part of the pipeline, uh, we didn't get our actual clear color that we set here. But we are now rasterizing our actual orange color. Now, where did that orange color come from? Just in case, um, you know, it, it was very subtle. Well, where are our pixels actually being filled in our triangle? Well, that is, again, in the fragment shader here. So this tends to be uh, a red, a orangish color. So uh, the pixel fragments that we are coloring in, again, in our fragment shader, that one's once per fragment, 1.0 in the red intensity, and these values range from 0 to 1 in the green, 0 0.5, and then 0 in the blue channel, and then 1.0, so it's fully opaque. All right, so let's go ahead and bring up this triangle one more time here and end the lesson here. So, folks, this was a monster lesson just to be able to get this triangle to show up. But the good news is once we get the triangle to show up, now we just need to create more triangles and then start transforming them. And before you know it, we can start adding different vertex attributes like textures, and you'll be able to write your own game and these sort of things. Now, some of the organization and logistics of the actual program, as far as maybe building a graphics framework, those things will also come at a later time. 
And feel free to experiment with and add your own abstractions as you like or as you learn from this series. So folks, I hope you learned a lot from getting this uh, structured and getting this program uh, up and running in OpenGL here, and congratulations if you did get a triangle up and running. And I think this will be a good video for supplementing and just showing how I organize or think about things. If you agree, go ahead and comment below, or if you find other useful resources, comment below and help out the community. So with that said, folks, I really appreciate all the likes and the thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe because we're going to be getting into even more cool stuff as we proceed further in this OpenGL series. We'll see you soon.